Measuring current using a microcontroller is one of the most fascinating things you can learn and use in your projects. Many of us have no problem measuring voltage at a point in a circuit. For example, we can use analog to digital converters ADC unit in a microcontroller to measure the voltage at a point in a circuit. But we all know that measuring current is not as simple as measuring voltage and we need to know a few simple but very important points. In this video, I want to teach you two main methods of DC current measurement using microcontrollers so that you won't have any problems measuring DC current from now on. After watching this video, you will no longer have any theoretical problems measuring small or large DC current, so it is worth spending a few minutes with me. There are two general methods for measuring DC current. The first one is to use a shunt resistor and the second one is to use a Hall effect sensor. In this video, I'll explain both methods in full detail so that you understand what advantages and disadvantages each has and where you should use which method. I'll start with the shunt resistor. What are you see here are examples of shunt resistors that are used to measure current. To measure current using a shunt resistor, we must place the shunt resistor in current path in series like this. Since this shunt resistor is placed in series with the main circuit, the current passing through the shunt resistor is exactly the same and equal to the current passing the main circuit. So, if we measure the current passing through the shunt resistor, we are actually measuring the current passing through the circuit. I said before that many of us have no problem measuring voltage and can easily obtain the voltage value at any point of the circuit using tools such as analog to digital converter units and microcontrollers. It's interesting to know that there is no direct way to measure current and to measure current we must first convert the current value to voltage then measure the voltage value and then convert the voltage value back to current. Here it becomes clear that what the job of the shunt resistor is, converting current to voltage. This is a schematic symbol of a shunt resistor. If we know the formula of Ohm's law, it's quite clear that if a certain current is passing through a certain resistor, a certain voltage will be created across the resistor and we can find out how much current is passing through the resistor by measuring the voltage across the shunt resistor. Let's do a test to see if our formula is correct or not. This is a 12 volt solenoid that draws about 600 milliamperes of current when I connect it to the power supply. You see, exactly 550 milliamperes of current is now passing through the solenoid. And this shunt resistor you see is also a 20 milliohm shunt resistor. So, if you place this shunt resistor in the path of current passing through this solenoid, you should have about uh, 10 or 11 millivolts across this shunt resistor. Here we see that about 10 millivolts is created across this shunt resistor. You may think that the calculations we have done have some errors, but here the reason of this error is not from our calculations or from the Ohm's lab, but from our tools. It is possible that this shunt resistor is not exactly 20 milliohms or the amount of current is not correctly displayed on this display and the real current is not exactly 560 milliamperes for example or the amount of voltage that my voltmeter shows does not have the sufficient accuracy. In any case, the amount of voltage we obtained is somewhat acceptable. That is, by having the voltage across this shunt resistor which is about 10 millivolts, we can obtain the current passing through the solenoid.
With these calculations, we have 500 milliamperes, which for a causal experiment like this, I think it is not much bad. Using a shunt resistor to measure current has many advantages, such as the fact that using this method is very simple, cheap, and has relatively high accuracy. On the other hand, it can measure very small or very large currents. Another advantage of using a shunt resistor is that, in addition to DC currents, it can also measure AC currents. Anyway, anyway, considering the advantages that I have listed for using a shunt resistor, you may think that the best method for measuring current is to use a shunt resistor. You are somewhat correct, because in many cases, using a shunt resistor is the best method. But this method also has disadvantages that make us not want to use this method in some cases. One of the main disadvantages of using a shunt resistor is that a resistor is added to the path. After all, no matter how small it is, it may negatively affect the performance of the main circuit here. For example, suppose if a large current is going to pass through the shunt resistor, it causes the voltage across this shunt resistor to increase and this amount of voltage that is created across the shunt resistor is dropped from the voltage of the main circuit here. This is more effective in the case where a large current is going to pass through the shunt resistor or the operating voltage of the main circuit is a low voltage. For example, if the main circuit is going to work with a low voltage such as 1 volt or half a volt. On the other hand, the shunt resistor definitely has power dissipation and in applications where power consumption is very important to us, it may cause problems. Another negative aspect that the power dissipation can have for our project is the power dissipation causes the shunt resistor to heat up and this heating causes the actual value of the shunt resistor to change. After all, the shunt resistor is also a type of resistor and its value changes with the temperature change. This change in the value of the resistor causes to have more errors in the measured current because by changing the value of the resistor, the voltage across it also changes. The last point about the shunt resistor is that we must be careful that the temperature of the shunt resistor do not change much. For example, do not place these resistors next to components that may have their temperature rise so that they do not cause the temperature of the resistor and consequently the resistance value to rise and cause errors in current measurement. Components such as regulators or transistors that may have power dissipation and temperature increase. Well, now that we are familiar with the advantages and disadvantages of using a shunt resistor, we can go to the second method to see what the advantages and disadvantages the second method has. For learning the second method, which is the method of measuring current using a Hall effect sensor, the first step is to get familiar with the Hall effect sensor itself. Hall effect sensors are used to measure magnetic fields and have different types. This component you see is called UGN3503, which is one of the most common and well-known Hall effect sensors for measuring magnetic fields. This component has three pins, two of which for power supply and must be connected to the supply voltage, and the other pin is for the sensor output. If we connect a voltage between 4.5 volts to 6 volts to pin number 1 and 0 volts or ground to pin number 2, the sensor starts working and creates a voltage on pin number 3 based on the magnetic field around it. I think it's not a bad idea to do a test on this sensor. Look at this number here. Now that I have connected the power supply, on pin number 3, which is the output pin, a voltage about 3 volts has been created, which means that the magnetic field around the sensor is not very strong. But when I bring the S-pole of a magnet close the sensor, the output voltage changes. Look here. That is, when the magnetic field changes around the sensor, the output voltage of the sensor also changes. If we change the pole of the magnet or bring the magnet from other side to the sensor, the effect of the magnet on the sensor is reversed. For example, if we bring the S pole of the magnet close to the side, it causes to increase the output voltage. Look. 
And if we bring the S bolt close to the sensor from other side, it causes to decrease the voltage. We want to use this property to measure current. You may think that for this, we should build a coil with a metal core. I mean the electromagnet and place it in the current path so that by passing current through the electromagnet, the magnetic field that this electromagnet has produced changes and we can sense the changes in the electromagnetic field using the Hall effect sensor and measure the current passing through the electromagnet and consequently the entire circuit. For example, if we wrap a wire like this around an iron pin and place this coil in the current path and measure the amount of magnetic field that this coil has produced with a Hall effect sensor. Let me do a test. You see that when the solenoid is turned on, the output voltage of the Hall effect sensor changes and we can calculate these voltage changes and obtain the current passing through the solenoid from the voltage change. I am not saying that this method doesn't work. It's true that this method works, but if you pay more attention, you will realize that the coil we built is actually an inductor and since the existence of an extra inductor in the current path can cause very, very many problems, even more than the problems that the shunt resistor causes, we can conclude that using the Hall effect sensor in this way is a foolish thing to do. There are far better ways to use a Hall effect sensor to measure current, but we don't have to tolerate an extra inductor in the current path. Look at this diagram here. Here, the wire which we are going to measure the amount of current passing through is passed through a metal ring and the Hall effect sensor is placed here in a place where there is a gap inside the ring. When a current passes through this wire, it causes a magnetic field to be created around the current carrying wire, I mean this wire here, and this magnetic field causes the ring to become magnetized. In fact, when a current passes through this wire, it causes this metal ring to turn into a magnet and affect the Hall effect sensor and change its output here. By doing this, we can measure the amount of current passing through this wire without placing an annoying thing in the current path. Using this method for measuring current has its own advantages and disadvantages. For example, with this method, unlike the shunt resistor method, we do not place any annoying thing in the current path and this itself is a very very big advantage. In other words, this method causes the current measurement circuit to be completely isolated from the main circuit and does not affect it. By using this method, unlike using a shunt resistor, we do not have any power dissipation which means that we can safely and easily use this method in measuring very large currents without worrying about power dissipation or voltage drop. Just like the shunt resistor method, this method can also be used to measure AC or DC. But this method also has its own disadvantages, for example. The main disadvantage of this method is that its accuracy is lower than that of the shunt resistor. On the other hand, this method also needs to be calibrated and is affected by external magnetic fields. That is, if a magnet is getting close to the sensor, it will disturb the entire performance of the current measurement system. Of course, of course, some of these disadvantages can be easily compensated by small changes in the current measurement circuit. The circuit that I have drawn here is called an open loop circuit. In contrast to this circuit, we have another model that is called a closed loop. Let me draw its circuit and then I will explain it. In this circuit, we wrap the wire around this metal ring and connect the end of coil to ground with this resistor. We connect the output of the Hall effect sensor to an amplifier and connect the output of amplifier to a current driving circuit. 
Now, here we will configure this amplifier in such a way that by increasing the output voltage of the sensor, the current passing through this coil is adjusted to a proportional amount and in an appropriate direction so that the magnetic field produced by this coil cancels out the magnetic field produced by the current carrying wire. After we have done these configurations, we can calculate the current passing through the current carrying wire by measuring the voltage across this resistor. With these discussions, we can conclude that if we need high accuracy, low cost and simple implementation, we should use a shunt resistor. But if we want our measurement system to be completely isolated from the circuit and not cause any disturbance to it, or power consumption is very important to us, we should use a Hall effect sensor to measure current. Well, my friend, this video is ending. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me so far in this video. Please, if you enjoyed watching this video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Until the next video, take care and have a good one.